here. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will proclaim your praise. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. Come, let us sing to the Lord, and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Let us approach him with praise and thanksgiving, and sing joyful songs to the Lord. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. The Lord is God, the mighty God, the great King over all the gods. He holds in His hands the depths of the earth and the highest mountains as well. He made the sea, it belongs to Him, the dry land too, for it was formed by His hands. Come, let us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. Come then, let us bow down and worship, bending the knee before the Lord our Maker. For He is our God, and we are His people, the flock He shepherds. Come, Come let, let us, us worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. Today, listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not grow stubborn, as your fathers did in the wilderness, when at Meribah and Massa they challenged me and provoked me, although they had seen all of my words. Come, Come let, let us worship, worship Christ the Lord, who for our, our sake endured temptation and suffering. Forty years I endured that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray, and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my anger, they shall not enter into my rest. Come, Come let, let us worship, worship Christ the Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, Come let us worship Christ, Christ the Lord, Lord, who for our sake endured temptation and suffering. The glory of these forty days we celebrate with songs of praise for Christ through whom all things were made himself has fasted and has prayed alone and fasting Moses saw the loving God who gave the law and to Elijah fasting came the steeds and chariots of flame. So Daniel trained his mystic sight, delivered from the lion's might, and John the bridegroom's and became the herald of Messiah's name. Then grant, O 
O God, that we may to return in fast and prayer to you, our spirit strengthen with your grace and give us joy to see your face. Please be seated. Look, O Lord, and see my suffering. Come quickly to my aid. O Shepherd of Israel, hear us. You who did Joseph's flock, shine forth from your cherubim throne upon Ephraim, Benjamin, Manasseh. O Lord, rouse up your might. O Lord, come to our help. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. Lord, God of hosts, how long will you frown on your people's plea? You have fed them with tears for their bread, an abundance of tears for their drink. You have made us the taunt of our neighbors. Our enemies love us to scorn. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt. To plant it, you drove out the nations. Before it, you cleared the ground. It took root and spread through the land. The mountains were covered with its shadow, the cedars of God with its bows. It stretched out its branches to the sea. To the great river, it stretched out its shoots. Then why have you broken down its walls? It is plucked by all who pass by. It is ravaged by the boar of the forest, devoured by the beasts of the field. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted. Med have burnt it with fire and destroyed it. May they perish at the frown of your face. May your hand be on the man you have chosen, the man you have given your strength. And we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your face shine on us and we shall be saved. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Look, Look O, o Lord, Lord, and see my suffering. suffering. Come, Come quickly to, to my, my aid. Lord God, eternal shepherd, you so tend the vineyard you planted that now it extends its branches even to the farthest coast. Look down on your church and come to us. Help us remain in your Son as branches on the vine that planted firmly in your love, we may testify before the whole world to your great power working everywhere. God is my Savior. I trust in him and shall not fear. I give you thanks, O Lord, though you have been angry with me. Your anger has abated, and you have consoled me. God indeed is my Savior. I am confident and unafraid. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and He has been my Savior. With joy you will draw water at the fountain of salvation, and say on that day, Give thanks to the Lord, acclaim His name. Among the nations, make known his deeds. Proclaim how exalted is his name. Sing praise to the Lord for his glorious achievement. Let this be known throughout all the earth. Shout with exultation, O city of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God, God is, is my Savior, Savior. I, I trust in Him, and shall not fear. The Lord has fed us with the finest wheat. He has filled us with honey from the rock. Ring out your joy to God, our strength. Shout in triumph to the God of Jacob. Raise a song and sound the timbrel, the sweet-sounding harp and the lute. 
blow the trumpet at the new moon when the moon is full on our feast. For this is Israel's law, a command of the God of Jacob. He imposed it as a rule on Joseph when he went out against the land of Egypt. A voice I did not know said to me, I freed your shoulder from the burden. Your hands were freed from the load. You called in distress and I saved you. I answered concealed in the storm cloud. At the waters of Meribah, I tested you. Listen, my people, to my warning. O Israel, if only you would heed. Let there be no foreign god among you, no worship of an alien god. I am the Lord your God, who brought you from the land of Egypt. Open wide your mouth, and I will fill it. But my people did not heed my voice, and Israel would not obey. So I left them in their stubbornness of heart to follow their own designs. Oh, that my people would heed me, that Israel would walk in my ways. At once I would subdue their foes, turned my hand against their enemies. The Lord's enemies would cringe at their feet, and their subjection would last forever. But Israel I would feed with finest wheat, and fill them with honey from the rock. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord, the Lord has, has fed us with, with the finest wheat. He has filled us with honey from the rock. Lord God, open our mouths to proclaim your glory. Help us to leave sin behind and to rejoice in professing your name. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. We see Jesus crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death that through God's gracious will, he might taste death for the sake of all men. Indeed, it was fitting that when bringing many sons to glory, God, for whom and through whom all things exist, should make their leader in the work of salvation perfect through suffering. The Word of the Lord. By your own blood, Lord, you brought us back to God. By your own blood, Lord, you brought us back to God. From every tribe and tongue and people and nation, you brought us back to God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. By your own blood, Lord, you brought us back to God. Please stand. I have longed to eat this meal with you before I suffer. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to His people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of His servant David. Through His holy prophets He promised of old, that he would save us from our enemies from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship Him without fear, holy and righteous in His sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare His way, to give His people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. 
to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. I have longed long to, to eat this meal with you before I suffer. The Father anointed Christ with the Holy Spirit to proclaim forgiveness to those in bondage. Let us humbly call upon the eternal priest. Lord, have mercy on us. You went up to Jerusalem to suffer and so enter into your glory bring your church to the passover feast of heaven lord have mercy on us you were lifted high on the cross and pierced by the soldier's lance heal our wounds lord have mercy on us you made the cross the tree of life give its fruit to those reborn in baptism lord have mercy on us on the cross, you forgave the repentant thief. Forgive us our sins. Lord, have mercy on us. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Amana min sumas Let us pray. God of infinite compassion, to love you is to be made holy. Fill our hearts with your love. By the death of your Son, you have given us hope, born of faith. By his rising again, fulfill this hope in the perfect love of heaven, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us bless the Lord.
Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today we are celebrating the Mass of the Holy Chrism. We shall also witness the renewal of the priestly promises by the clergy of the Diocese of Paranaque. Our presiding celebrant is His Excellency, the Most Reverend Jesse E. Mercado, D.D., Bishop of Paranaque. Let us now begin our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends in Christ, 
we come together today in thanksgiving for the gift of Christ's faithful shepherds and for the grace of the church's sacraments made holy by the consecration and blessing of the oils. Let us pray for God's loving mercy so that we may courageously walk in His presence and become instruments of His unbounded grace. Let us acknowledge our failures and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty, Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have seen in my thoughts and in my words, and in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God, to comfort all who mourn, to place on those who mourn in Zion a diadem instead of ashes, to give them oil of gladness in place of mourning, a glorious mantle instead of a listless spirit. You yourselves shall be named priests of the Lord, ministers of our God shall you be called. I will give them their recompense faithfully, a lasting covenant I will make with them. Their descendants shall be renowned among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them as a race the Lord has blessed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. found David my servant with my holy oil I have anointed him that my hand may always be with him and that my arm may make him strong my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and through my name shall his horn be exalted. He shall say of me, You are my Father, my God, the Rock, my Savior. from the book of Revelation. Grace to you and peace from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priest for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory Jesus came to Nazareth when he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was under the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captive and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. Jesus said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord.
Please be seated. My dear brothers in the Lord, my dear friends, welcome to this church dedicated to our Blessed Mother, the Madonna del Divino Amore. I wish you were here, my dear brothers, and seeing all of you together in that beautiful vestment, how beautiful you are to look at. It does indicate to us the beauty of the priesthood, the gift that we have received. So after nearly three years, almost three years, we celebrate this Holy Thursday with this traditional Christmas Mass where all of us priests of the diocese gather together to renew our vows as priests of the Lord. It calls to mind again the day we became priests. Tu es sacerdos in eternum. What a wonderful sight to behold, to see all gathered together as one presbyterium. Indeed, it is a very special day for all of us, remembering our priestly ordination. And therefore, there are three things I would like to say about this day. First, today is a day of proclamation our public declaration of God's gratuitous love for each of us through the gift of our priesthood. We all have our own particular stories of how we got our vocation. God called us to a deeper communion with Him through the gift of our priestly calling. In whatever circumstances they may have occurred, the common denominator of our experience is that our priesthood is a gift utterly gratuitous totally unmerited no one of us deserves it for out of the abundance of his merciful love God called us you are my son in whom I am well pleased go and follow my son on the path of greater service to the church. And so, we responded to that call. What does it mean to be God's priest? One way to appreciate who we are as priests of the Lord is to consider how others see us. They may be our friends, our family, members of our family. They may be our parishioners, our co-workers in the vineyard of the Lord. In this regard, I am reminded of that beautiful reflection written by an anonymous author entitled, The Beautiful Hands of a Priest. Brothers, imagine hearing these words from your own parishioners, from your own friends and loved ones the beautiful hands of a priest. We need them in life's early morning. We need these hands again at its close. We feel their warm clasp of true friendship. We seek it while tasting life's woes. When we come to this world, we are sinful, the greatest as well as the least. And the hands that make us pure as angels are the beautiful hands of a priest. At the altar each day, we behold them. And the hands of a king on his throne are not equal to them in their greatness. Their dignity stands alone. For there in the stillness of morning, 
ere the sun has emerged from the east, there God rests between the pure fingers of the beautiful hands of a priest. When we are tempted and wander to pathways of shame and of sin, it is the hand of a priest that absolve us, not once, but again and again. And when we are taking life's partner, other hands may prepare us a feast, but the hands that will bless and unite us are the beautiful hands of a priest. God bless them and keep them all holy, for the host which their fingers caress, what can a poor sinner do better than to ask him who chose them to bless? When the death dews on our lids are falling, may our courage and strength be increased by seeing raised over us in blessing the beautiful hands of a priest. Brothers, that's who we are as priests of the Lord from the standpoint of all those we come to encounter and meet along the way in our service of, to the Lord. And what about the unforgettable and incisive insights by Jean Baptiste Henri Lacordaire of the Order of Preachers in his now famous Thou art a priest forever to live in the midst of the world with no desire for its pleasures to be a member of every family yet belonging to none to share all sufferings to penetrate all secrets to heal all wounds to daily go from men to God to offer him their homage and petitions to return from God to men to bring them his pardon and hope to have a heart of fire for charity and a heart of bronze for chastity to bless and be blessed forever oh God what a life and it is yours O priest of Jesus Christ. How wonderful that today we renew, as we renew our priestly commitment, we proclaim with gratefulness the gift of our priesthood. Today, as we recall our ordination day, we also remember it as a day of renunciation, which is really an affirmative declaration of our single-hearted and total love for God and for His Church. When we renounce something, we give it up. We are willing to hand it over to someone else. We relinquish freely our rights to it. But there is also an aspect of that action of surrendering that is very positive and affirming. For to renounce is to renunciare, to announce again and again something good and beautiful, something even more beautiful and amazing. For that day, we freely renounce all material possessions and wealth to be the goal and focus of our life and ministry. And I hope we have not forgotten that as the years of serving the Lord in our ministry take place. Because Jesus is the only thing that can fill up our heart's longing. Affirmatively, we are declaring, we also declare that a life of poverty and a life of simplicity actually bring us closer to Jesus and identifies us with Him who is the poor and humble servant of the Lord. That day, we renounce freely the joy and ecstasy of married life, an excellent road to sanctity, might I add. 
and of the thrill of having a lifetime partner who would be with us always through the ups and downs of a life of togetherness. On the other hand, it also proclaims that celebrate loving, loving others without possessing them is possible and declares that God's love suffices for us to fill up and complete the yearnings of our heart for communion and intimacy. And also, that celibate loving for us means that we can offer our whole self, body, mind, and spirit entirely to the service of God's people and be totally happy and fulfilled as a person. That day, we also renounced unreservedly our will that is, letting go of our desire to take control of our life by placing our hands in the hands of our bishop who will always guide us to the knowledge of God's will for us and give us the courage and humility to obey it promptly. In giving up wealth, saying no to married life, and surrendering our free will, through the three vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, we proclaim God's sovereignty in our life and obeying His will as our life's goal and mission. The secret to our happiness is finding God and doing His will all the days of our life. Today is also a day of anointing. Today, in the liturgy of the Word, God says something twice to us, one in the first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, and again from the lips of Jesus in the Gospel. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for He has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, and to the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favor. Yes, brothers, we have been anointed. Why? For a mission. The Holy Father keeps reminding us that our mission is truly a mission of compassion, a mission of love, a mission of mercy. Pope Francis has emphatically stated that he wishes to intensify a church that is missionary in outlook, that shows the mercy and love of God, a church that is not, quote, wagging its fingers at people, not scolding people, but rather is inviting people, walking with people, befriending people. And in all of this, we strive to do our best to imitate the one who calls us to ministry. Lastly, at the heart of this morning's liturgy is the blessing of the holy oils, the oil for anointing catechumens and anointing the sick, and the chrism for the great sacraments that confer the Holy Spirit, confirmation, priestly ordination, and episcopal ordination. A word about the oils then. The oils represent our initiation into the life of grace, and into the churches and into the church in baptism and confirmation as well as the special consecration of priestly ministry they re represent also the community which brings christ care in a special way to the sick and those at the end of their life these oils remind us that the church is the community within which we realize how our entire life is embraced by the loving care of God. Therefore, this blessing of the oils also reminds us of how our fundamental unity within our diocese is built upon the sacramental life of the Church. As I end, let me thank, let me thank my brother priests who are here for joining me in this celebration. Today, my heart is filled with gratitude to the Lord for you, my brother priests, 
with whom I am privileged to serve. Thank you for the burdens you bear and the witness you give. I also thank all the faithful of the diocese, religious, women, consecrated people, and the lay faithful, who join us in countless ways in carry out, carrying forward the Lord's mission to bring glad tidings, to set free, to heal, to unite, to redeem. May it come to pass that this mission is fulfilled in us and through us, and may God bless us and keep us always in His love. Madonna del Divino Amore, pray for us. Beloved sons, on the old anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred His priesthood on His apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? I do. Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conform to Him? denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's Church, which, prompted by love of Him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination? I am. Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mystery of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the Head and Shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only to, by zeal for souls? I am. May the Lord who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment. As for you, dear sons and daughters, the faithful in their homes, pray for your priests that the Lord may pour out His gifts abundantly upon them and keep them faithful as ministers of Christ the High Priest so that they may lead you to Him who is the source of salvation. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. And pray also for me that I may be faithful to the apostolic office entrusted to me in my lowliness and that in your midst I may be made day by day a living and more perfect image of Christ the priest, the good shepherd, the teacher, and the servant of all. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. May he keep us all in his charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flock, to eternal life. Amen. Please be seated.
the oil for the Holy Chrism. The oil for the sick. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, mercifully wipe away what, in, what is old in us and increase in us the grace of salvation and newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest, of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that his priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men 
to become sharers in His sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in His name the sac sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the Paschal banquet, to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments. As they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exultation we acclaim To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we humbly we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, guard unite, and govern her throughout the world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, John, and Paul, Cosmas, and Damien, Lorenzo, and Pedro, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God is Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as ones you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with their grace and blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who true sinners, hope in your abundance mercies, graciously grant those share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all saints. And admit us, we beseech you into your company, not willing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all things good, all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. The Blessing of the Oil of the Sick God of all consolation, you chose and sent your Son to heal the world. Graciously listen to our prayer of faith. Send the power of your Holy Spirit into this precious oil, this soothing ointment, this rich gift, this fruit of the earth. Bless this oil and sanctify it for our use. Make this oil a remedy for all who are anointed with it. Heal them in body, in soul, and in spirit, and deliver them in every affliction. This we ask, to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Through Him, with Him, in Him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The consecration of the oil for the Holy Chrism. Let us pray that God, our Almighty Father, will bless this oil so that all who are anointed with it may be inwardly transformed and come to share in eternal salvation. God, our Maker, source of all growth in holiness, accept the joyful thanks and praise we offer in the name of your Church. In the beginning at your command, the earth produced fruit-bearing trees, and from the fruit of the olive tree, you have provided us with oil for holy chrism. The prophet David sang of the life and joy that the oil will bring us in the sacraments of your love. After the avenging flood, the dove returning to Noah with an olive branch announced your gift of peace. This was a sign of a greater gift to come. Now the waters of baptism wash away the sins of men, and by the anointing with olive oil, you make us radiant with joy. At your command, Aaron was washed with water, and your servant Moses, his brother, anointed him priest. These two foreshadowed greater things to come. After your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, asked John for baptism in the waters of Jordan, you sent the Spirit upon him in the form of a dove, and by the witness of your own voice, you declared him to be your only well-beloved Son. In this, you clearly fulfilled the prophecy of David, that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness beyond his fellow men. And so, Father, we ask you to bless this oil you have created. Fill it with the power of your Holy Spirit through Christ your Son. It is from him that chrism takes its name. And with chrism, you have anointed for yourself priests and kings, prophets and martyrs. Make this chrism a sign of life and salvation for those who are to be born again in the waters of baptism. Wash away the evil they have inherited from sinful Adam, and when they are anointed with his holy oil, make them temples of your glory, radiant with the goodness of life that has its source in you. Through this sign of chrism, grant them royal, priestly, and prophetic honor, and clothe them with incorruption. Let this be indeed the chrism of salvation for those who will be born again of water and the Holy Spirit. May they come to share eternal life in the glory of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen.
My dear brother priests, we have just consecrated and blessed the sacred oils which will be used exclusively for the sacraments of the church. As custodians of these symbolic elements, I enjoin you care for these oils as you care for the other treasures of the church. Keep them in dignified vessels and display them for the people to see so that it may arouse in them a lively faith. Instruct the faithful of your community so that they will understand the value of these signs and that they may benefit from the graces which accompany their use. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Father, look with love upon your people, the love which our Lord Jesus Christ showed us when he delivered himself to evil men and suffered the agony of the cross, for he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come, come upon you, remain with you now and forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. May we request the priests to please leave their vestments on the pews where they will be collected. And also the distribution of the holy oil will be at the Adoration Chapel. Thank you.
Isang pa.